Tonight, we consider the birds of the air and how to get rid of them. Just make sure you can control one of nature's fiercest predators. Here's some things you will absolutely see in this story. The majesty of viticulture in California's central coast. Acres of farmland carefully cultivated to produce quality wines. And vines fairly bursting with ripe grapes. But here's something you will not see today. This is what's known as a murmuration. A huge flock of starlings as they move through the air looking for a new place to nestle and feed. This stunning formation is sometimes called a dragon due to the way it twists and turns in the air and its ability to pretty much destroy whatever's beneath it. And the reason you won't see that is because of a guy named Vahe Oliverdian. Along with his super cool name, Vahe has turned his lifelong passion for falconry into an actual job. Now he's got a company with another super cool name, Falcon Force. He and his falcons are saving California's vineyards from certain annihilation, for which I am personally and eternally grateful. Well, tell me what's gonna happen today, physically. Uh, we're gonna drive around looking for trouble. I'm so ready, let's go. I figured we'd be carpooling, but I had no idea who was in on the ride share. Oh. Oh, look at I this. I don't mind the birds, Mike. <laughs> really? They're okay. Oh, that's fantastic. How far are we going? Uh, about yeah, 15 minutes. I'm just, <laughs> somebody just hacked my old AOL account. Everybody in my address book now thinks I'm in the Philippines. I've been arrested and mugged and I need $1,800. <laughs> I get that all the time. Unbelievable. That one hasn't, hasn't gotten old, it seems like. No. So if you're on my list and you got this, I mean, I could, I could use the 1850, but I'm okay. <laughs> I'm not in the Philippines. I'm in, where am I? Like cent City. Central King California? Yep. I'm in King City with a falconer. I'm not in the Philippines and I haven't been mugged. But I'm not convinced I'm entirely out of danger. These birds, if they wanted to, they could probably no, they're, gang up on they're, us. They're, <laughs> How long have you been doing this? I had my first falcon when I was seven years old. You know, animal lover to the core. So when did you realize that this hobby, this love, could actually pay the bills? Well, it didn't happen that way. In fact, I'm a professional photographer. I, I operated a commercial photography studio, mm -hmm. and I was just tired of that environment. My passion is outdoors. I mean, I, I've been living off the land for the last 21 years now. I haven't bought any meat, poultry, or fish. What? So, yeah, I fly fish for salmon and trout, and uh, I archery hunt for big game, and the birds provide the fowl. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> Modern day savage, I call it myself. Anyway, so I just, I just wanted to pursue something that was more in line with my passion of being outdoors. So how long does it take to train one to the point where you really want it? I normally get my birds at 70 days old. For the most part, we get birds on the wing within two week period. They get better and better and better. It's like a bottle of, good bottle of wine. <laughs> well, let's go see what they're all about. Of course, even a guy like Bahe can't do it all alone. That's where employees like Becca Butcher and Kalen Pearson come in. These members of the Falcon Force abatement team have predatory bird skills nearly as impressive as Vahe's. So Becca's gonna demonstrate with this bird called Little East Texas Red, okay. which is a Barbary falcon. Spicy little guy. What Becca's doing is guiding the bird as it patrols the fields for grape-eating pests. And she does it with a certain, let's call it panache. She's a fourth degree black belt karate instructor, so her skill set of martial arts applied to what she's doing is, it's like a ninja. <laughs> you're, a, you're a black belt falconer? Black belt falconer? Yeah, yeah that's exactly what <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that term, but that's pretty cool. So the way it works out, the bird's coming down stooping, and you're serving that lure, and you're pulling it away from that bird. The bird's objective is to make contact with that lure, and as soon as that happens, it's game over. Oh. 
It's very unlikely that he's going to fly into our face, right? No. As long as you hold your ground, he's not. Fast. Now, at some point, does she let him get yeah. it? Yeah, at one point, yeah. At some point, we'll, when the bird is exhausted yeah. or overheated and that beak starts cracking open, we know it's time for the bird to have the lure. Okay, now that, that was the end call. That means come and get it, it's done. Hi. That's it. So that bird's pretty much done for the morning flight. Becca, you're kind of interesting. <laughs> I mean, you're a cowgirl, you're a falconer, you're a fourth degree black belt. And she makes custom made knives. Did you see this? You silly, just stop. We're she talking made about, this we're from talking about bird abatement. <laughs> What are you doing Friday nights? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a list. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I, imagine, I imagine there is. So you're feeding, does he feed himself or is he feeding right out of your hand? Oh, you know, sometimes he'll have little pieces stuck in his foot and so I'll just give it to him. It's kind of a relationship building thing. Well, sure. Anytime a woman pulls me <gasps> out of my toes and then lets me eat it, I'm pretty well, I'm pretty well hooked. I mean, that's a close relationship I right mean, there. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Becca makes the job look easy, and there's no bigger rookie mistake than looking at an expert and thinking, oh yeah, maybe I can do that. All right, so this is what I'm gonna do here. You're not yeah, a black belt, are you? Absolutely not. All right. Okay, he's free to go. He can go anytime he wants Should to. Should I let him go? Oh. No, he'll just go. Okay, go ahead, pull out the lure. Hop! Hey, up! Serve. <laughs> Sir? <laughs> it's hard not to duck. Just in case you haven't caught the subtle nuances that differentiate Becca's style from mine, let's watch again. There's Becca. And there's me. Becca. Now me. Yeah. Me again. Virtually indistinguishable. Well done. Uh, I don't know. I don't think I really did it. Did it? Did it that well? You know what? You know what you did that most beginners don't do is you attacked it with confidence. Oh well, that's just uh, that's ignorance more than confidence. <laughs> I don't know any better. I just trust you. I mean, I've, I, I, I'll edit that out. I mean, I, probably not. They'll cut it into the promo. Let's learn something real quick, shall we? Falconry was first practiced in Mesopotamia over 4,000 years ago. From there, it spread, becoming the sport of royalty in such far-flung locales as Europe, Mongolia, and the Middle East. It enjoyed popularity until the 17th century when guns came along and made hunting by bird obsolete. But in the early 20th century, falconry enjoyed a resurgence right here in the United States as a recreational hunting activity. Recently, it's come full circle with a whole new practical application. Coming at you. I'm with bird abatement specialist and American dreamer, Vahe Oliverdian, getting a first-hand look at the varied methods he and his team of fierce employees use to make sure this ends up looking like this. Oh, there's a few birds here. Those are blackbirds and finches. Why don't we fly here to get them out? Yeah. I don't know if that's enough birds for a full-blown murmuration, but it does present an opportunity to squeeze every drop of visual majesty from this segment by mounting a tiny camera onto the tiny skull of a falcon called Genghis. All right, here we go. <laughs> so he's like, what are you doing? <laughs> now watch those birds. See what happens as soon as he's on the wing. Up, up, up. It's a huge lift that's coming off of this, this Big, ledge. Like a yeah, and, it, and so they take that to their advantage. This is Genghis. This is a hybrid between a peregrine falcon and a jeer falcon. The peregrine is the fastest bird in a stoop that can reach 280 miles an hour. Up, up. The jeer falcon is the most powerful and the largest of the falconite. So you cross the two of them and you make this Ferrari that. A very big, very fast bird. Look at these birds leaving. 
Look at those birds. Hop. Yeah. Coming right at you. You can see all the birds are way above him. Nothing wants to be flying under that stooping falcon. Hop. Hop. Okay, so it's not a dragon formation of desperate starlings, terrified beyond all yeah. reason. Hop. Yay! But this is cool too. <laughs> Oh, he's gonna go down on that pole. Is he? Yeah, cargo's really heavy on him. In relative terms, that tiny camera strapped to Genghis's head is like you or me walking up a ladder with an anvil tied to our head. Genghis does not approve, which means Vahe goes to work. The things we do for a shot, we got a fancy little camera, put it on the bird. It's too heavy for the bird. Bird flies down the valley, sits on the pole. Too much weight to fly back up. Poor Vi has got to go down there with his lure. Hop, hop, hop. We got to follow him. Hey, Becca, why don't you come down here and be interesting? Sure. I was enjoying my conversation with her, but that's fine. Come, if you come want on. Becca, come I'll on. come with. This is why you don't bring producers on shoots. <laughs> Things we do to protect your grapes, eh? How's he doing? <sighs> doing fine, but just too heavy. Yeah. Too heavy and too hot. But you can see that those birds came out of there, took off, and that's all that matters, really. In a perfect TV world, we'd be overrun with murmurations and Vahe's birds would be demonstrating their prowess before our wondering eyes. Alas, Genghis and his pals accomplished that task a few weeks earlier. Whatever happened to scarecrows? That, that works for about 48 hours. <laughs> Nothing scares them than their own enemy. It takes $400 per acre in order to put netting and yet the birds will still eat the fruit right through the netting. I mean, this is a 2,500 acre vineyard, so you do the math and they're saving so much money. It's and 400 an acre, you got 2,500 acres, so that's over a million dollars. That's exactly. It is so, a million dollars. So, so if, they, if, you can, if, you, yeah, if you can buy that farmer's trust to begin with, it is, it's a win-win situation. Sometimes the best proof for the effectiveness of a program <laughs> is in what you don't see. So, while we didn't get to demonstrate it for you, we did get to meet a man who saw an opportunity in an ancient sport and used it to solve a modern problem. Chasing away unwanted pests to protect defenseless crops. And best of all, we got to do it in wine country. 